and Thanasha was over the central interior extending towards that coastal area. We also have a watch for severe thunderstorms over that interior of Kozun Natal extending into that extreme southern part of Mpumalanga. Possibility of heavy downpours over those areas. Morning for pests are also possible over that interior of Kozun Natal. Poor visibility is a possibility over those areas. We also have a secondary development of coal fund over the southern parts of the country, causing the 30% chance of showers in the morning over that western part of the Western Cape. So please be on the lookout over those areas. And now looking at our overnight temperatures, still experiencing some relatively cold temperatures over the country. With Sutherland expecting a low of 5. Calvinia can expect a low of 9. With Appington, warm temperatures with a minimum of 14. Musina can expect a low of 19. Warm temperatures expected along that coastal line of Kwazulu Natal. With Devon expecting a low of 20. The mother city can expect a minimum of 12. Now looking at our provinces in detail, starting off with Gauteng, we are expecting some relatively warm temperatures for tomorrow. With particular conditions expected over the pro over the province, with Pretoria peaking at 26. Johannesburg can expect a maximum of 25. So let's bring some relatively cloudy conditions over Limpopo. With those isolated showers expected over the southern parts of the province. Musina peaking at 30. Bulogwani can expect a maximum of 26. Severe thunderstorms expected over that eastern interior of Mpumalanga. Cool temperatures as we move towards Emelo with a maximum of 25. 24 is your maximum in Middleburg. Still experience some relatively isolated scattered thunder showers over that interior of Kwazulu Natal with warm temperatures over the interior with Ladysmith peaking at 31. Devon can expect a maximum of 27. Expecting some relatively clear conditions over that western part of the eastern Cape, but warm temperatures with particular conditions expected along that coastal line, with East London peaking at 22. 22. Umtata can expect a maximum of 20. Mother City can expect some clear day for tomorrow with a maximum of 20. Cape Galas expecting some warm temperatures with particular conditions as we move towards the interior and also along the southern coastline, with George peaking at 21. Still experiencing some morning fog patches over that coastal line with Springbok expecting warm temperatures with a maximum of 22. Hot temperatures expected as we move towards that interior with Appington peaking at 28. Moving to the interior, still experiencing some relative warm temperatures over Free State with Bumotain peaking at 21. So, so back can expect a maximum of 26. And lastly, over the Northwest Province, still experiencing some relatively warm temperatures with Tosca peaking at 30. Tau can expect a maximum of 26. Mahi Mahike can expect a maximum of 28. And Sunday can expect isolated to scatter thunder showers over the central interior with widespread as we move towards that coastal line of KwaZulu Natal. That's all the weather I have for you. Stay tuned. It's ABC. to hold the leaders accountable. I was asking my question in my language. People are dying. What no, no. are you doing about that? There is a lockdown where there is a police with the CPF. There are a lot of complaints. What have you done for this community? She has devoted her life to the upliftment of children in this area. I go into the area, collect all children to teach them. My name is Manitra Ramali. To me, green means go. We do not just speak. We let every voice in our nation find full expression in language and in culture. We do not just teach. We empower all people with education. We do not just bring you the news. We place you where the news is happening. We do not just entertain. We take you on journeys. We do not just broadcast sport. We create an arena for sporting heroes to inspire you. Ours is not just a job, it's a calling to ensure that everyone in our nation is informed, educated and entertained. We're able to do this because you do your part. SABC TV licenses, it's all made possible by you. The SABC News mobile app is your one-stop digital portal to all the news you need. Stay connected with the latest in breaking news. Watch the SABC News channel along with clips and live streams of all the big news events. 
and listen to all the SABC News radio stations live, including podcasts and much more. Simply download the SABC News app to your Android or iOS device from either the Play Store or the App Store. SABC News, independent, impartial. We do not just speak. We let every voice in our nation find full expression in language and in culture. We do not just teach. We empower all people with education. We do not just bring you the news. We place you where the news is happening. We do not just entertain. We take you on journeys. We do not just broadcast sport. We create an arena for sporting heroes to inspire you. Ours is not just a job. It's a calling to ensure that everyone in our nation is informed, educated and entertained. We are able to do this because you do your part. SABC TV licenses. It's all made possible by you. We're explorers. We always have been endlessly curious, always looking for answers, for new frontiers, for new stories. Because that is who we are. From script to screen, from yelling action to taking you on a journey. Radio producers, script writers, on-air presenters, news reporters, sports analysts, we spend late nights creating captivating storylines and earlier mornings keeping you informed, educated and entertained. For us, it's not a job. It's a calling. We do this and more because you do your part. SABC TV licenses. Made possible by you. since the beginning. We've changed for the better. For us, it's more than respecting each other, it's about understanding each other. Seeing the world through each other's eyes. We will always try new things. We won't always get it right, but we will always try. We are all different, but it's our diversity that is our most powerful strength. Each one of us gets the chance to bring something different. Our passion can rewrite our story. Our purpose is bigger than cricket. It's our responsibility to leave our country in a better place. The world needs to see what South Africa can be when we are one. Hashim Amla. Hashim's impeccable hand-eye coordination is a strength that has brought him nearly 8,000 runs in ODI cricket. His cool and calm demeanor at the crease rubs off on his batting partner on the other end. With 174 ODI caps for the Proteas, the opening batsman has a deep-set understanding of big game tournament cricket, having played in two previous World Cups. Hash holds the record for the fastest batsman to 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 and 5,000 ODI runs. And that's how we begin this segment of Sports on Full View. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us right here on SABC News Channel. Throughout this segment of the program, we'll be showing you profiles of the 15-man squad that will be doing duty for South Africa at the Cricket World Cup, as you saw in England and Wales next month. In fact, in a month and a half or so. So do stay tuned throughout. I say you'll enjoy them as I have done so. Let's give some football news now before we carry on with those profiles. It's crunch time in the 2019 Nedbank Cup semi-finals. Golden Arrows will be heard home to uh, TS Galaxy, while Chipper United will entertain Kaiser Chiefs in Port Elizabeth. Both matches are Saturday. You know what? Fantastic game in prospect. Kaiser Chiefs have been known as Cup Kings since their formation in 1970. But times have changed. 
Amakosi have not won any piece of silverware in the past three and a half seasons, and the Netbank Cup is their only realistic chance of winning something in the current campaign. What's the decision? Referee goal kick, he says. Chiefs will face Chipper United at the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium in Port Elizabeth on Saturday evening. But the Chile boys are no pushovers and they are playing enterprising football under the stewardship of Clinton Larson. Their position on the APSA Premiership lock is not a true reflection of the kind of performances they have been producing throughout the season. The Chipper United Kaiser Chiefs match will kick off at quarter past eight on Saturday. Have come accustomed to know. In the other semi-final fixture at the Shukare Kulu Stadium in Claremont, Steve Hombela's Golden Arrows will take on the only surviving side from the national face division, TS Galaxy. Yeah, it could be a situation here for Arrows, and it's Lerato Lamola. Abafana Bestende cannot afford to underestimate the NFD side. The side from Gwandebele in Pumalanga has had a good run under the guidance of Dan Malisela. They are in the top eight bracket in the NFD standings. Galaxy is keen to make history by reaching the final of the NetBank Cup. The Eros Galaxy match will be at 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Mtutuzi Njavu, SAPC News. And you can catch those on our sister channel, SABC Sports and One. Let's give you some tennis news now. 10 seeder Daniel Medvedev of Russia stunned world number one Novik Djokovic to advance to the semifinals. This of the Monte Carlo Masters Tennis Tournament. Medvedev beat Djokovic 6 3, 4 6, and 6 2 to seal his place in the final four of the tournament. The 10th seeded Medvedev went toe to toe with Djokovic in the first game of the opening set. He had a good start winning a rally to break the world number one. There's the quality of the backhands to take control of the point. What a start. The Russian had an answer for everything Djokovic threw at him. He outfoxed the Serb to win a point at the net and go one set up. He's dug up another. Djokovic upped his game in the second set. He lobbed the ball beyond Medvedev's reach for his first break of save to take a 2-1 lead. The Serbs finesse shone through in the next and he won his service game to consolidate his lead. Well finished off. It's a good sequence of points for Djokovic. 12 of the last 16. Djokovic hit an ace to close out the set and level the match one set apiece. The third set went with save until the third game. But the pendulum swung back in Medvedev's favor when Djokovic's forehand went long in the fourth game. The Russian inched closer to victory when Djokovic's backhand went long in the sixth game. Medvedev pinned back the world number one on the baseline before sealing victory. Daniel Medvedev wins big here in Monte Carlo. Pesinga to CBC News. One for the ages, that victory. Now, as promised, we continue giving you a look at the profile of our cricketers who will be doing duty for the a country at the Cricket World Cup in England and Wales next month. Here's a look at some of the big hitters of the 15-man squad. Aidan Markram is one of the finest stroke makers in the game at the moment. His elegant technique, the flamboyant follow-through of his bat, his backward drives through the covers, or the pull shots through mid-wicket, the right-handed top-order batter possesses a natural flair for scoring runs. Running off a rich vein of form in the 2018-2019 season of the Momentum One Day Cup, where he scored 542 runs in five innings, Aidan stands in good stead to bolster South Africa's chances of lifting the coveted World Cup trophy. Having captained the ICC World Cup winning under-19 Frontier side in 2014, the 24-year-old got his call-up to the national team in 2017, scoring 431 runs in his first three international innings and continues to show prodigious signs of class and leadership. David Miller The left-hander is one of the best finishers in the game. He specializes in batting aggressively in the latter stages of the Proteas innings, a passage of play that has since been coined Miller Time by fans. At the crease, David lives by the mantra, if it's in the arc, it's out of the park. 
If it's in the V, it's in the tree. The Peter Marisburg born middle order batter holds the record for the fastest T20 international century and one of the fastest centuries in the Indian Premier League. When he's not hitting cricket balls out of stadia, David enjoys spending time on the beach and traveling. Quinton de Kock, South Africa's dependable glove man in all three formats of the game. He is a destructive top-order batsman. Quinton de Kock brings crucial utility to the pro tier side. In 2016, Quinton had a successful tour of Australia. His performances helped the Proteas seal a record-breaking tour down under. When he is not trailblazing in green and gold, Quinton enjoys spending time in Nisna on his boat. Rassi van der Dissen has been a consistent performer in South Africa's domestic circuit in recent seasons. The right-handed batsman has enjoyed a continued run of good form in domestic cricket in recent years, hitting a purple patch in the 2018-2019 season when he was the highest run-getter in the inaugural Mzanzi Super League, form that guided his franchise, the Jersey Stars, to take top honours. Away from cricket, Rassi spends his time in the African bushveld and supports wildlife conservation operations. That's just to look at some of the South African cricketers' approach of fire, as it were, who will be doing the business for the country at the Cricket World Cup in England and Wales, but later on this year. We'll give you more updates. The bowlers, I know a lot of people are looking forward to them. It is an outstanding bowler check. But first, let's give some golf news. Now, Shane Lowry is leading at the Harbour Town Golf Links in the RBC Heritage in South Carolina in the USA. This after shooting a 600 past 65, he enjoys a one-shot lead over Trey Mullenex, as well as Daniel Berger, Luke List and Ryan Moore, who are tied for second. Dustin Johnson here on the 427 yard. Slight dog leg left, par four. Top ranked Dustin Johnson, who finished tied in second place at the Masters in Georgia last week, rallied with two birdies in his final seven holes for a 68. That left the American three shots back. Epitomizes an all-around player, no question. It's serious skills. Former U.S. Open and Players Champion Webb Simpson shot 69. After a slow start, struggling on the greens, Johnson came back stronger. I felt like I drove it well. I hit everything, you know, even my three wood, all, all the clubs that I teed off with, I drove it really well, nicely today. Um, hit some good iron shots too. Just, I mean, this golf course, the greens are tricky. It's, they're hard to read, and you know, I felt like I hit some really good putts that didn't go in, but um, three under around here, I'm pretty happy with it. I kind of do the same warm up every day, so I always work hard on the wedges. You know, I feel like that's an area of my game where, you know, you can't be too good at. And um, so, so I work hard every day on them, and it's, you know, today was pretty good. I mean, I hit some nice wet shots, but um, yeah, I mean, today for me it was driving. I drove it really nicely. Lowry birdied three of his first six holes and three more birdies on his back nine to lead the pack in the first round at Harper Town Golf Links. We're handling that guy just right right now. We're staying away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I leave him alone. Mdutuz in Lovu, SAPC News. Nice on them do. Well, finally, we have to say goodbye. As we do say that, I leave you with the final look at the Team South Africa to the Cricket World Cup in England and Wales. Now, these are our bowlers, our bowling attack at the World Cup. The men will be looking to take the wickets and hopefully lead us to victory. And I'd like to see the approaches move past the quarterfinal stages. And with that, I bid you a good night. I hope you have a happy Easter weekend. Bye-bye. But here's a look. Lungingiti. Standing at 1.93 meters tall, Lungingiti has been another one of South Africa's major talent revelations in the last two seasons. Born in rural Kranskop, Lungi announced himself on the world stage in 2017 when he inspired the Proteas to victory against India, taking the prize wicket of Virat Kohli in his first test. The right arm fast bowler has continued on an upward trajectory in his career, going on to represent the Proteas in all three formats of the game. Dubbed the X-Factor Bowler by Faf du Plessis, the 23-year-old has the propensity of taking a wicket in the first over of his spell, making him his captain's go-to man in the power play. Progressing to Hilton College in KwaZulu Natal, then onto the provincial side, the paceman's skill and guile has taken him to Pretoria, where he has been instrumental in the Titans' success in domestic cricket. Andile Pesuguayo. 
The all-rounder brings balance to the Proteus side, providing impetus with the bat in the middle order and skillful variations with the ball in the death overs. Andile's sporting career began at a young age with a sojourn into hockey, which earned him a scholarship to Glenwood High School in Durban. It wasn't until he was picked up for the under-19 provincial side that his cricket journey started. Andile has been consistent for the Dolphins on the domestic circuit. He took the most wickets in the 2015-2016 season. In his maiden series, Andile was the leading wicket-taker and tormentor-in-chief for South Africa as they whitewashed Australia 5-0. Andile loves to listen to his favorite tunes. His fondness for music has meant that he usually has headphones on wherever he is. Dale Stain The ageless competitor, affectionately known to fans as the Stain Remover, has had to battle injury late in his career. After sustaining a shoulder injury in 2017, which kept him out of the game for an extended period, Dale has successfully come back into the side to become South Africa's highest wicket-taker in tests. Originally from Palaborwa, Stain's journey to the highest level of the game is testament to the fact that South Africa continues to draw genuine talent from all corners of the country. Just four shy of 200 ODI wickets, the right-arm fast bowler has been the Proteus mainstay in the bowling attack. His presence has been invaluable in imparting knowledge and skill to his teammates. The experienced 35-year-old has realized a recent resurgence in form and is beginning to bowl with more pace and aggression, bringing out the crazy eyes that have intimidated batters around the world. Dwayne Pretorius Dwayne's versatility as an all-rounder brings invaluable balance to the Proteus side. His ability to adapt to the demands of variable match situations has brought him success with bat and ball. The 30-year-old all-rounder's ability to bowl accurately in the middle overs will serve South Africa well in English conditions. Dwayne first played for South Africa against Ireland in 2016 and has taken 24 wickets in 19 one-day internationals. He has often cited his emphasis on simplicity as being the core of his game plan when batting or bowling. Imran Tahir Imran Tahir is passionate about the game and possesses a deep-set desire to win matches for the Proteas. The experienced right-arm leg spinner is a fierce competitor who has mastered his deceptive bowling variations over the years and continues to outwit batters around the world. Imi's post-wicket-taking celebratory runs into the outfield have become his trademark, something the fans have come to expect and enjoy. Imran has a knack of taking wickets early in his spell, an ability that will give his captain a genuine attacking option in any passage of play. The evergreen right-arm leg spinner has recently announced that he'll be playing his last ODI cricket for South Africa during the World Cup. Get the facts first. In 1994, I was very excited. For South Africa, art was never a good thing. From a footballing point of view, there was never a separation. Get to the truth. There are still some serious issues in South Africa. But I think the government can try to do it. See what it all really means. I is geel, and this is the clear and the verkeerslag that you see very specific. I still give South Africa a hit. We are somewhere in between. We're giving our democracy a green for sure. We're very happy. <laughs> Democracy Gauge, weekdays at 5.30 on SABC News, Channel 404. We're explorers. We always have been. Endlessly curious. Always looking for answers. For new frontiers. For new stories. Because that is who we are. From script to screen, from yelling action to taking you on a journey. 
Radio producers, script writers, on air presenters, news reporters, sports analysts. We spend late nights creating captivating storylines and earlier mornings keeping you informed, educated, and entertained. For us, it's not a job, it's a calling. We do this and more because you do your part. SABC TV licenses made possible by you. We do not just speak. We let every voice in our nation find full expression in language and in culture. We do not just teach. We empower all people with education. We do not just bring you the news. We place you where the news is happening. We do not just entertain. We take you on journeys. We do not just broadcast sport. We create an arena for sporting heroes to inspire you. Ours is not just a job. It's a calling to ensure that everyone in our nation is informed, educated and entertained. We are able to do this because you do your part. SABC TV licenses. It's all made possible by you. Very good evening to you. Welcome to News at Nine. I'm Shante Yankees. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Let's have a look at your headlines. The community of Mpangeni in KwaZulu Natal is warning after a partial collapse of a church killing 13 congregants. Police are still searching for a motorist who ploughed into a group of cyclists, killing one. And millions of Christians across the world commemorate the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his death at Calvary. The top story this evening, condolences are pouring in following the death of 13 congregants when a church wall collapsed on them in Langubo near Mpangeni in KwaZulu-Natal last night. Well, President Sil Ramaphosa also wished the 16 injured a very speedy recovery. They were rushed to a nearby hospital. Some remain in a critical condition. A tragic start to the Easter weekend in KwaZulu-Natal. A section of the Pentecostal Holiness Church collapsed on worshippers. The area was lashed by gale force winds on Thursday night. A church member says some of the victims were asleep at the time. Twelve women and a young boy were declared dead at the scene. Thirteen injured congregants were hospitalized. 79-year-old Busasi Wezigalala is lucky to have survived. She says she was protected by the bodies of the victims on top of her. Some of the congregants fell on top of me when the wall collapsed. I tried to shout for help, but there were too many people on top of me. But I survived because of them. Relatives of the victims are still reeling in shock. I am sad, but I'm also comforted in knowing that my mother died at a place she loved, the church. She would not miss the church for anything in the world. Church leaders say they couldn't alert emergency services due to bad network reception. They were forced to drive to the nearest police station for help. We tried to call emergency units, but the cell phone networks was bad. We were forced to rush to the police and ask them to help us. Some of the injured have already been discharged. Two are still in ICU. This saddens us a great deal and we want to pass our condolences to the families of those who have departed. We believe that there are more than 60 people who are also injured and we wish them a speedy recovery. We believe that uh, doctors have done their best to help them recover and they're still going through tests to be able to establish the level of injuries, whether any spinal injuries, head injuries and so on. The families of the victims are only expected to identify their loved ones after the long weekend. Lungi Sikumalo, SAPC News, Mpangeni.